There. This is Flash Somebody at the Dork Table program. RealLibertyMedia.com. Do I close this now or what? Yeah, I'll, I'll get it. I just want to make oh. sure it works. Okay. Well, I had a little mishap with my first attempt today. <clears throat> and uh, now we're going to do a second attempt at a Dork Table program. Starting at, oddly enough, 6.20 p.m. local Danish time. And uh, with any luck, I can pull this off alone today. And we've got a, we've got Grimner who handles, you know, mastering all the shit that goes on. Make sure this stuff gets out broadcasted and put here and put there. So I, I tried to do a dork table thing earlier on my normal time. And he said that uh, there was something wrong. So I abandoned it. And here we go with take two. And I'll go to my favorite RLM group because, you know, that's what we live for. The RealLibertyMedia.com chat's got Barman, Grimner, Moose Girl, Miss Kate, Anti, Asmo, Circle, that's Hello Honey, uh, Chloe, Don underscore C, me, Graham Z, I B Don C, double dipping, Meisterbrow, Ponder Gander, A Vinny, Poxified, Poxophone, Pwned Sauce, Rain, RLM, Fluke, Rob Works, Rooms, Vinny, Woodman, Phantom 2, Beetle, Colfax 101, Cyborg, Noodle, Dakota, D, Dork Cake, Z, Frumpy, Frumpy 2, Gromit, Java Doctor 2, J's, Nines, J's, Kozu, Sock Puppet, and Skittle. <clears throat> wow, a little rough on the throat. I, I've had a little leftover cold from my wife. She gave it to me. And fighting it off, so I'm not bedridden, but, the, you know, the, how you feel when you got a stuffed up nose and all that crap. Your throat's a little... Can't smoke as good as you like to because, well, you need to drink a lot of shit with it. But anyway... Here we are, Flash at the Dork Table, Saturday, the 1st of December, 201 and 8. And uh, I was going to do a, my wife decided that I should uh, do a program about reality. And there's so many levels of reality, I don't, I don't really know which level of it to start at. Because we don't all agree on this one. Hey, Vinny. <clears throat> the the differences that we see are just phenomenal. So, who knows? Maybe there isn't, you know, one said reality that that, and that in itself is the illusion I'm always calling it, because it's only as real as the believer. You can only be in one spot. So, if I'm in Denmark right now. And my friend is in California. They're still, you know, they're still happening. But out of sight, out of reality. <laughs> you know, because at some point, the only way you can communicate is through the electronic world. So somehow or another, they've got us convinced that we're limited, you know, by, uh, well, first they go with law. That's the first lesson you're taught. But then they send you to school, teach you how small and, and puny you are. And without a big group of other puny whatever you are, uh, you have no power. <clears throat> That's the message I get from it all. You know, Without them, I'm nothing. And nah, I, I wasn't so convinced. I wasn't so... Uh, hmm. I wasn't an isolated kid. I had friends and I had family and all that kind of crap. But I spent a lot of time sneaking off to be by myself to not be told what to do by everybody else. That that part, I could say. And one of the best ways to do that was to go to the swimming pool. Because you're surrounded by a whole shitload of people, but you're swimming and they give you a lot of fucking room. Because nobody wants to get drowned by somebody's you know, that's in a panic. 
So being crowded in a swimming pool didn't happen to me. Mm. So we got that side of it. But uh, anyway, and I had my daily exercise. Wow, I still think about it still uh, to the day. I want to return to the swimming pool. So hmm, maybe I'm part fish. Hey, that would be weird. That Kanye guy on uh, South Park might have been right. Because I like fish sticks. Ah. Anyway, let me take a sip of elixir and see where we can go with reality. Wow. Hmm. I think there's a difference between your personal reality and then the shared existence reality. And uh, learning about some of the details of how like how the game is operated how it truly works and the misdirections and and the deceit that come out of the information we get to make life you know decisions so that you can have a good life and and the information you got's a bunch of shit <laughs> now that's the way i see the results of the joint reality Now, on another level, you have personal reality, I think. And that would be, you know, confined to the to the four walls that surround you in your prison at the moment. Because I'm sure if you're hearing this, hmm, positive of it almost, anyway, couldn't, the best you could be doing is to be in a car. And that's still, hmm, you got your walls there, your doors and your windows, so you, you're isolated from everybody else you know so your reality hmm. i think depending on how seriously that somebody's willing to take looking at it that you're capable of doing whatever you limit yourself to do like for example coming to denmark would have been a lot more difficult if i hadn't played the state game with id crap but I'd already done that for other purposes, you know, family uh, family requirements, I suppose you might want to call it that. And and in a way, I was fortunate to have parents that lived out of the U.S. So to me, traveling in or out of the U.S. never seemed like a great big deal. My mom came from a faraway land and all that crap, and I never saw any of that until I was almost thirty. I woke up one day and they said, hey, you want to come visit us? And the little girl I was sharing an apartment with at the time, she didn't want me to go. She was like, oh, you can't do that. And then two weeks before the air, the airline ticket, I went through all this uh, crap with the uh, passport. This is where it all began. It all started when I was living in California. And my parents hadn't seen me for a while, so... They extended their hand and said, oh, we'll send you a ticket if you'll come and visit us for a while. So, two weeks before the flight, the earthquake hits. So, that night, we're in the bar. The earthquake just happened. The room stopped rumbling. I went right to the telephone. And I called my mom collect on a public payphone, and she panicked already. And I told her, we just had an earthquake. The power's probably going to go out. This phone call is going to get cut off. I'll see you in two weeks. And if you want to keep talking, go ahead. But we'll probably get cut off afterward. So don't be, don't get excited. And everything went fine. Two weeks. And I went there. But, hmm. but the reality of it, I could have been uh, put myself in a position to not be able to call her by waiting and putting it off. You know, let's not, and then not panic her. No, we had an earthquake. We're from California having an earthquake. It wasn't as big of a, a panic thing to us as, say, to somebody that lives in tornado land or uh, hurricane land. Each disaster brings a different result. Mm. The people that live in earthquake land think the people that live in tornado land are crazy. So I grew up making fun of Mary, for living in the wake of where a tornado's passed through. And I'm sure that Mary grew up making fun of people that live in California, 
where the ground is going to shake and we're all going to fall off into the ocean and drown and capsize or something like that. But I don't know. I never really took it all too seriously, but it's that kind of a mindset, you know, where we play these petty little competitive games to be better than the people we're different than, you know. Cause it's not fun. It's boring as fuck to get along. That's just real. I think the truth of it all. Hey, Moose, Moose and Grim are yakking up on the Real Liberty dot com chat. So oh no, Real Liberty, Real Liberty Media dot com chat. Getting all tongue twisted trying to catch up with my brain here. Let's see, cannabis. Yeah, well, they've been calling it marijuana for a long time too. That's what I'm pissed off about is that the state, the, you can call it the government or whatever, fuck it, this state, that's all it is, had some brilliant fucking idea, you know, let's, let's skin these bastards and take them for everything they're ever going to have and control every move they make. And that's where we live today far as I can tell, in our electronic reality that everybody wants security and privacy and what? <laughs> all, all it's a matter of is enforcement. And there's just not enough enforcement to even control the amount of people that are on the internet. There's no way. There's a lot of us, too. Not as many as people would probably assume. You know, like, oh, the numbers must be staggering. Hmm. I think in the overall scheme on, on the population, the numbers would be pitiful. And we've lost a lot of great voices, too. Like, uh, I remember when Salvinor left. And I was disappointed because he was creative and he would do crazy shit. Talk about weird things like me. And just have a, have a good, good time. Let people know what he thought about it. And I, he got bored of the electronic world and left it about two years ago now. Then Clint Richardson, I got turned on to him from, I think, Vinny. Vinny got me on UCY TV or something like that. And anyway, searching around, something Vinny showed me, I found Clint Richardson. And then he quit. Did his last show and did a farewell thing. And he had a few people listening to 25,000, something, something like that. So, I'm not doing this to... Uh, to be Clint Richardson. I'm doing this to point people towards people like Clint Richardson, you know. Or if you're really into the the Bundy thing with the land management people and how they, you know, how they illegally do what they do under the color of law and Hal explains all that. So, hmm. I'm I'm, I'm watching these games, you know, as a observer, not as a player. Never Never really wanted to get involved in politics or education. What's my other complaint? Pop. Um, just organized society at large is terrifying. I mean, they bring out these freaking um, idiots, just morons with guns and badges. They get a shiny little badge. and It's like dress up for uh, Halloween to me, to go to work every day dressed as a cop you know it, oh johnny are you ever gonna grow up i mean think about it if, if people just walked around for no reason dressed like they do to go to work in a freeze free reasonable society they would be looked at as odd what are you doing that for well you wanted some attention here you go so i applied that you know my reality to the joint reality, and, and I never come up with the same thing. I have, pe people have told me over and over for years, we have the police to protect us from the blah, 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 blah. Well, okay, if a crime happens first, and the cops happen second, hmm, <laughs> it doesn't sound like they're helping you a whole fucking lot, but, <laughs> oh, we got cell phones, and we can call fast, well, let's see. Hmm. chances are you're going to get crimed way before you can get solved. So my reality dictates that the cop is just a third party looking to make a dollar. And 
all this shit that we do to each other in the first place. It's all um, taught to us. We are encouraged to behave this way through the society we live in. It's, it's a big three-card money game of, ooh, look at this over here. And while you're looking at that, they do something different over and over in every area of life. doesn't matter what, what you look at. Well, then that's my negative reality coming through saying blah, 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 blah. But I still defy you. If you can think of something good that is government's idea and government's um, work, what they've actually accomplished and show me where it's good, I'll look at it. I mean, I won't agree with it blindly. Which is, of course, the problem is throughout my life people wanted me to trust them you know did you think ah trust in god where's god i want to ask him myself oh you're a funny kid ah well why can't i just ask him myself what's this and never got a straight answer so at a early age i knew there's something wrong with the story not that there's no God, but the way they tell me there's a God. Nah, I can't be like that. That's just nonsense. That's like explaining the Kennedy assassination. The magic bullet. It did this and it did that and it defied gravity. And it, it came from a building from a guy that couldn't shoot a rifle to save his ass in the first place. Oh, yeah, that guy. Hmm. So when, when I've got all these gems to pull out of my bag, when I think of all the good the government's done for me because every president since i was a child the first one uh, was eisenhower i guess was holding a seat when i was coming in the world then was kennedy and here we are today but each president since eisenhower in my opinion since i've been alive has been a more of a piece of shit than the piece of shit before him uh, i don't know how they get the fucking office Mm. And all my friends during, like, say, the Clinton era, Clinton was, uh, when he was holding that job, there was plenty of work for the working class. And I was uh, working with remodelers and doing weird shit at the end of the 80s to make money that I never thought of doing as an adult until I um, got out of finance. You know? Finance in the sense of headhunting for commission it's like being a salesman only different anyhow which brings us back to the topic of reality oh, i don't know it's a, such a subjective thing my reality feels uh, personal you know and the shared reality i i laugh at most of it i, I don't find it doesn't strike me as interesting we did a um, Tuesday night, did a show with um, Vinny and Moose Girl. And Moose wanted to, to do some stuff about uh, what she was reading, the links. And well, I don't know, some of the stuff people read about links just don't get my attention. And the argument we did have was pretty good. You know, she got me. But uh, in the end, it was about the uh, prohibition of cannabis and i to this day to tomorrow in the next year will always believe that human beings alive today that live under the color of law whatever color of law you live under uh, are secretly terrified of these freaking pot laws and they exist and the ones that they've repealed still existed for a lot longer than they didn't so you're stuck with it at some form of indoctrination for me, maybe not for you, you guys are all special and I'm, I'm the only one that, that this works on, but I've always been uh, aware that the system around me forbid the use of pot. And now they've got um, cannabis and CBD oil and that's not smoking pot the fuck are you people talking about this is what's going on in my reality not yours right so i think wow they're comparing a medicinal property of a flower to a recreational property of a flower and what they've done is they've synthesized the freaking flower 
to make the oil. So I don't trust what they're using. No, I'm going to stay away from it. No, thank you very much. But that's why I brought up Clint Richardson earlier is listening to him. He had this other guy. I'm so bad with names. It's really embarrassing. But they had this other guy talking about the origins of the inoculation back in the 1850s about they're about you know the use and the excuses they use to experiment on us in that fashion so when you think about this crap the level that i think he was going in is they've convinced us a hundred years later plus that a hundred years ago that they just said well we're going to experiment and see what happens and what did happen it worked out so well we were going to continue and continue and continue but you can't sue them if anything goes wrong. So, if you think about it in the right light, unless you don't live in a reality at all, um, these things, hmm, they're as real as you allow them to be. But you've either you got to deal with it or not deal with it one way or the other, I think. So, if you don't see it, doesn't mean it's not there. It just means that you're not looking for that. You know, reality. Ooh, what a fucking top. I think I'm going to smoke another bowl and really make this show a mess. <laughs> I want to get into the mess with reality show on the dork table. Now, I believe Kate, Miss Kate, just responded to my comment and says, yes, but everything from 50 years ago is new again. Uh, no, it's not. And, it, and the the reason I say that is the quality of life then, physically, the external crap that we were putting in us was a better quality than what we're getting as a collective today. They hadn't figured out all these shortcuts. They were working on them. The oils and margarine and all this synthetic shit that we been have been indoctrinated to uh, to use. Cigarettes. They add shit to the fucking cigarettes. I mean, you got to buy a fucking natural blend, blah, 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 roll your own fucking cigarettes, or buy the poisoned ones. <laughs> and there again, 50 years ago, they weren't poisoned as badly as they are now. Maybe the law doesn't, but if a cop um, wants to be an asshole, he can and use that as an excuse. They always have. They always will. They can say they won't anymore. But it's got to the point where interaction with the police to me is threatening. So, And I always think of weed. Because I've been smoking it forever. And everywhere I've ever lived. It's always been against the law. So everybody knows. You, you know. It's fear based. And that's my reality. I'm glad you got a great um, perspective of all the good shit that's going to come out of legalizing this shit. It's just another fucking control. I don't see how people are any less afraid if if the punishment's lifted or not. I mean, the punishment existed. So there's your fear. I don't know. That's the way I see it. I'm kind of stubborn about that one. And no, the law doesn't prevent you from doing anything. The law is the one that enforces the punishment of you breaking the code. That's what I'm against is this we don't live in uh, in a world globally where everybody's treated right. We live according to the laws that we're surrounded by. And fortunately for me, what I found was the less law enforcement you have where you reside, the freer the society seems to be without all their intrusions and, you know, their cop lights and their colors and their suits and their shiny, they're intimidating. And their arms and all that crap, you know. The bikers don't run around 20 at a time up and down the roads either. So, you know, it's very uh, balanced here. They'll make a show when it's necessary and I have still yet to see one. The biggest thing I saw was downtown, some, some people my age riding with their wives on the back, about 10 of them one day. 
and it was really cool because they paired up and they rode double down the main road of town where I do my drinking. <laughs> it was, oh man, it, it's one of those things. You know, I'm from America, so I'm I'm just amazed that my life brought me to to a place where I could see new shit at such an old age. And not that it's new to see people on motorcycles. It's new to see people my age on Harleys riding, you know, double wide on, down down a, a main street when I'm having a beer on the on the sidewalk. <laughs> anyway, so, but that's you know my reality dictates to me that I live where people can be comfortable to be themselves to some degree. You know, all this. Uh, I was listening to Mary talking about the the restrictions on Facebook and um, what's that other one Twitter I I don't use either one of them anymore and I know you got to put this crap out there in the world and all that uh, on the you know the recorded programs we do and we have really good information on Real Liberty Media I understand all that but fueling um, the beast that I'm truly against over all of it is way more important to me than being uh, heard. <laughs> Not hearing me isn't going to change your life any more than hearing me. But my little contribution to the game is to pull away from the big guys. So, and in every area, I can be aware of it. I don't drink Coke. Uh, I don't burn gasoline anymore. I try not to spend money on um, stuff that's obviously trap, you know. I have my little addictions. Yeah, it's not my reality. Okay, Gr Grimner interrupted me with this, so I'm going to take a sharp turn and go with it. Um, oh, yeah, when Miss Kate's got Berlin apologizes for serving pork sausage at Conference on Islam. I think these people are like the Jews, and you couldn't please them if you hit them with a new board. It ain't going to matter. You're going to hear this shit every fucking day. It's just the new nigger. It, no, you can't say nigger no more. Don't say nigger. Now look at these people and said, here's some Islams to fuck with. But you get the new people to play with as long as you just don't say nigger no more, and you can play with these people. But... If you're anti-Semitic, we'll fuck you in the ass in a heartbeat. So don't say nothing bad about the Jews. <laughs> I mean, is this really, really reality? Are you fucking kidding me? Words, words. People are convinced now okay, that the words are the end all. Not action. Action? Ah, fuck that. I said something to her and she got her feelings hurt. Or he. Mm. Or maybe not even one of those. Maybe it's a binary thing. Well, how do you talk about this fucking shit? I don't even know. And, but in Denmark, I don't have to worry about it. Because I don't speak the language here. So if people want to talk to me, you know, they got to be nice to me. Ah. And I am a firm believer in you get what you give. So. I get along. Ha, 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 ha. But anyway, yeah, pork sausage at a Islam conference. You know, yeah, I was hearing the other night about how uh, how bad it is to be uh, anti-Semitic. Why? And why is any fucking negative thing you say about, you know, the Israeli boycott? Fuck Israel. Boycott. The, don't buy anything from Israel. Nothing. Well, but then you got a little problem. You know what that problem is? It's like, I don't know, 30-something billion dollars. I don't know if it, how much. It's huge. It's a lot. I think Grimner knows. Grimner or Moose or Kate, some of the brainiacs would probably figure it out. How much money does the U.S. give in, in aid to Israel yearly? <laughs> so... And now, on top of all that, they're fuck. They deal in every fucking thing, banking to arms. They own the whole fucking planet through owning other shit, you know, other people, because that's how this game really works. In my reality, 
is I see these these links between certain names and certain uh, pretend ideas like this fucking uh, Queen of England bullshit. Yeah. All my fucking life, I have heard women piss and fucking moan up one side and down the other about how men get treated better than women do. And I would just ask them, does that include the Queen of England? And that would pretty much stop that conversation right there. You know why? Because these idiots believe there's a Queen of England. Now, why would you want to believe a thing like that? I mean, to the level of subordination, and that's better than me. So you do a little reading about the Queen of England. You know what you find out? <laughs> German. <laughs> Hans would be, Hans would be all over himself with the best mayonnaise money could buy right now. If you heard me say that, <laughs> but you know, Hansel doesn't like my show. <laughs> billions of dollars yeah yeah i know it's billions but i don't know how many billions and yeah there me and moose are going to agree for something for some strange reason but yeah the u.s on you see in the reality the verbal reality of the world fluctuates and changes from person to person and that's what i mean is they got this game so convoluted and it's so wrong to blame the um the actual person that's doing whatever harm is being done you got to blame the victim to get along in society <laughs> you can't be pro palestine you idiot <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you you have to be pro israel because they they hold the cards they're the ones everybody bows to and the only reason i can understand it is religion and i don't believe in religion so i don't <laughs> I use it, I mean, as a concept, as a, something to talk about. But in my day-to-day -day reality, there's no such thing as a Jew. I give two fucks about a Jew. Or a, a Arab, uh, what the fuck is that, Islam, or a Christian, or a Catholic. I still just see people. I never thought, in my whole life, I've never gone out in the world in my day and looked around and went, ah, oh, what religion are you a part of there, sport? <laughs> I mean, it's the farthest thing from my reality that, that I could find. But if it's thrown in my face, I'll stand my ground and say, well, it's a good story, but it doesn't make sense to me. Now, of course, they go, well, it's faith-based. Well, there you go. <laughs> what did P.T. Barnum say? <laughs> Said, <laughs> Step up. I got plenty of time. That's what he said. Anyway. Well, no, it doesn't matter the exact amount. It matter, What matters is that the public is so easily persuaded that they believe the victims are the aggressors. They've had their fucking land occupied for, what, 70 years? It's been a while now. It's a long time going. 70, something like that. It's like 49. Anyway, um, to, and here we are. It was a 50-year plan to get to that point where they were in 49, or maybe 40. <clears throat> they dreamed it up before 1917, before World War I started. They'd already had all this shit in the works. Whatever's going on today, it's not happenstance. It's not law. It's a chess game between a couple of billionaires. And we're stuck in the middle watching it and people think they vote and they think there's a society that gives a shit about them and they're so lost <laughs> i i don't think that the most of them in organized you know religious society i don't think they give a shit about anybody but themselves in the first place to live like that in your mind i mean wow with all this knowledge at your fingertips you know the reality of life it could you could change in any direction you want why still live in you know in a bible doesn't make sense sorry vinny am i pissing you off with my anti-bible story because uh <coughs> you know in my reality there is no such thing as the, a written word written words usually just end in bullshit you know contracts and problems show me a 
Show me a thing in life that you feel you need to use your signature to acquire, and I'll show you where you're flawed. That's the problem, is having to use your signature in the first place to acquire something, and then all the misdirection and lies behind what the other side does to you after you agree blindly, because you're trusting. You trust these fucking thieves, and they skin you alive like a potato. They don't care. And as we all know, the potato skin is where the most of the vitamins are at, you know. So what are they kind of people into doing? Skinning your taters, taking off the all the vitamins and throwing them away so you don't eat them. Make those mashed taters. Mm -hmm -hmm. Add some crap nola oil to it and stuff and all that kitchen shit the guys and gals out there know about. Anyway. Oh, boy, that got me pissed off, huh, Moose? The U.S. is... See, it's all a, a mental... You couldn't convince Hans of the truth of what we were just talking about. Hans would have a completely different outlook on it. But he refuses to do a show and explain why or tell us more about it. He just puts up Fox links. <laughs> Poor kid. Anyway... <laughs> Oh, I know of any. Eh, I, see, and that's why I like, that's the best way you can do it. Because uh, if I believe in a God, this is the first thing that comes to my mind is, my God can cover my ass, so the fuck do I need to protect God from you for? <laughs> God can handle you just fine. That's God's problem, not mine. The only time I get involved when some, you know, when people insult you, me, you know, if I'm insulted by something, that's easily done, easily. You know, I misunderstand shit myself every now and again. Don't see the sarcasm or see it too well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all a matter of interpretation. Because you can make reality whatever you want. You can make the best thing in your life the worst. And you can make the worst thing in your life the best. It's just all a matter of... Uh, <laughs> yes I did it's all a matter of how you interpret the information that you're seeing or getting whenever, however you're receiving it usually the information I think we're, we're getting is uh, how we respond to outside input you know? it could be anything it could be words, it could be something you see it could be something you smell but whatever the input is it, that'll be different for me than it will be for you so how did how did they get this uh, group illusion of society? How do they get us all to ever see that the same? There's no way. It wasn't designed to even do that. It was designed to split us up. And then all this bullshit fucking government crap. Wow, that that was uh, to me as far as in reality. Boy, that was the con of all cons is uh, Federal Reserve Bank. Okay. And then the things that followed after it, the birth certificate, uh, Social Security, uh, the driver's license, you know, and how they, they trap you in this paper game. And it, it's not real. It's real if somebody enforces a broken code or if you have a, a mishap out in the world. But outside of that, now society's just a shared illusion of a bunch of trusting idiots trying not to kill each other. <laughs> and, and then you got the 10% that just don't give a flying fuck. And some of those have a, a different reason. There's not like they all share the same illusion. You got to remember, there's 7 billion people. You're going to run into some fun people out there if you go looking. Hmm. Govern the mental... I don't want to be governed. That's 90% of my problem. It's And that's, I think, what what got me to where I'm at now is I'm not concerned about you. Well, fuck, I'm supposed to run around being all afraid. Oh, you're going to hurt me. And, oh, you're going to drive your car in my living room, and then i got to get lawyers and sue you. And, wow. No, I don't, I don't think so. I actually think that there's a... 
there's a better way to live that brings you uh, better results. And it's easy. Just don't hurt people. And it seems to me, the less other peoples that I hurt, the less the other peoples seem to be attacking at me. Eh? 50-50, man. Except for those uh, Nicaraguans down in Mexico threatening to move into California and change the world. I, what, what was 7,000 people supposed to do? I mean, the whole thing was so ridiculous. Anyway, how do you feed 7,000 people walking uh, for months? <laughs> and their, their numbers grow. Where did, I mean, wow. <laughs> Who, who's in charge of showers? <laughs> oh, I got mental today. Exactly mental. And, you know, you, you know as well as me from experience. You see what you see. And I've never, in all the times we've chatted, I never tried to tell you what to see. What I told you was, you're the only one that knows how to explain what you see. So work on that. <laughs> it's, it's not my job to tell anybody else. You know, what I see of them is my business. It's not their business. Unless it's good. You know, because we all like to get a little, you know, a uh, little compliment here and there doesn't hurt. But... You know, like picking on Hansel for being adult all the time. It gets old, but he's never not adult. So I guess I can't get over it, but <laughs> it's it's still fun. Anyway, where are we going to go with the talk about reality? I tried opening up. I was telling the story about going to see a bunch of relatives. And it was all just the way it unfolded. It had nothing to do with what I... I would call a plan. I had a, I just had things happen, you know, and circumstances being what they are, people, people make their assumptions off what they, what they hear based on what they are, you know, you judge the bad guy with your own, your own moral code judges the, the piece of shit guy out there that you don't like, you know. That that's my stand is for myself is if I get a problem with you, it's more than likely that you're full of shit and either you don't know it or you do know it and you don't care. And the way that you profess what you know is insanity. But then again, that's my, how I read that particular thing. Okay, so. Hmm. But I'm not alone in that particular decision. I just didn't want to brag about, you know, the other folks that share it. But it's not my own personal, just me against one person thing. Just for some reason, I enjoy the argument more than other people do. and Because it, it goes away, but wow, it comes back again. <laughs> and, it, it, and it doesn't, it hasn't evolved. I'm getting back to boredom again on it i like my uh worthy adversaries in the written world to you know climb to the next rung let's you know let's spar you want you got something to say no not last year's let's work on something new <laughs> give the reader something to read uh high low ranger music coming from denmark well i don't know um cakes it's it's just a strange world to me, probably, because as far as society is deemed, I'm the one that's strange. You know, my my weird ideas about not being violent, my, my strange ideas about uh, doing my half, you know, in a situation without being uh, expected to or told to, you know. Some things, you just do them, you know, and you don't need to be told or reminded and some people need to be reminded to be nice and some people i'm one of those because uh, i'm not by nature i'm not a kind and loving kind of guy but if i'm reminded often enough to be nice then i will respond that way it's what i learned while i've been living this uh, island living in small rural village-ish place in in denmark is uh the the interactions with other people are, they're just mirrors of whatever the mood I'm in at the time. 
And I, I wonder if those people look at me and think the same thing. You know, whatever they saw was just what they saw. It didn't represent anything. It wasn't a study. Uh, nobody's going to pass a law based on the information. It was just, you see what you see out there, and that's it. It's not all that big a fucking deal. But somehow or another, movies, good God, movies have made a a murder on every block and an armed robbery on every you know in every town and on and on and on and i've yet to see any misbehavior in society in so long uh, it would probably shock me to see it now when people drop things in public out here somebody will yell at them to get their attention so they can return what the person dropped. <laughs> I've seen it more than once in, since I left North Carolina. I saw it once in Kirkwall in two years. But I've seen that very same thing here more than a few times. Of course, I spend more time out doing uh, commerce in the main part. My wife does not like to do the commerce. I wonder how that worked out. And I didn't. But it's a nice way to uh, mix with people and uh, be involved in things without being actually involved in things. You know, I'm like a, a representative of, of the two of us. So I don't go out armed with my anarchist brain, you know, trying to help anyone. I don't tell anyone they're a slave. They know it. If they don't know it, you cannot tell them so. It's not... It's not their reality. Their reality is, you know, they're a good citizen. And here we're in a kingdom. So being a, a good citizen is really not all that hard to pull off. You know, if you're a member of the game, like my wife, for example, who has a, a employment and a home and all these strings attached to her marriage and animals and family. So, you know, her reality is a lot different than mine was before I got connected with her, you know. I was just uh, tied to family through a, a verbal agreement. It wasn't, uh, nobody expected me to do anything. It was, thanks for staying. Not, <laughs> and there was no please don't go. It was just, wow, you, you did a lot, and I'm really glad you did what you did. Thank you. Next. So... Hmm. But for like Cirque, Cirque is not in her reality. She sees America as a uh, an intruding, threatening, fear-based place. I suppose because she doesn't even want to visit it. Wow. Wow. Hmm. But then I got to look at the difference between you know how the information about how our people are treated through society, you know, by the police is the biggest, I think that's the biggest thing that's got her uh, negative to it going. It's my opinion of, of her reality. Yeah, yeah. But the stuff I've seen, it's even made me go, hey, whoa. Hmm. Let's see what's going on in the reallibertymedia.com chat. Hey, Java Doctor came in and says, <clears throat> and I quote, Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer got the Indiana, what's the selector? I don't know, Soli probably it's a mistypo, Soli probably Solicitor General, to admit that he believes it is constitutional for the police to seize someone's car for driving five miles per hour over the speed limit. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, you know, Supreme Court justice, this is why I laugh at all this law shit. I mean, I'm not willing anymore in my life to put my future in the hands of nine relics that don't, you know, don't even know what day it fucking is, making decisions about shit that doesn't matter, like driving a car, and then come out with a result like this. I mean, the control... Over, the control over we the people it's staggering I mean I I never even thought about when I lived in America I never thought about things like we got uh, so much percentage of the human population alive in one place 
And that's not very much of it. But you've got 25% of the world's prison population, apparently, lives in it. One, one country out of 200 and something. Now, I was pitched that was the home of the free, the land of the brave, you know, baseball, apple pie, you know, uh, grandma, grandpa, those good things. And, and as I aged, I started seeing uh, asset forfeiture, <laughs> property tax. Um, <laughs> oh, here, here's another one of my personal favorites is the income tax. Uh, Internal Revenue Service is a, it's not a government agency. It's an outside enterprise. They're on the freaking Dun and Bradstreet as a business. You can look at them up. <laughs> it's not government. But just like advertising and how we've been treated all these years through advertising, you don't have to advertise the truth. You just can say shit. Because the way they've got the laws written about it is, well, you're not really telling them anything. You're just saying stuff, you know. Coke is good for you. Uh, drink a Coke. Well, that turned out to be a lot of shit. But they didn't say who it was good for. It was good for them because they made a lot of money selling it to us, you know. That's reality is the opposite sometimes to me because there's so many people and so many people unwittingly support the very shit that they bitch about every fucking day but they blame it on all the wrong things oh drug addict, drug addicts have done this and no drug drug addicts are a byproduct of the state and the state planned it that way that's why you got drug addicts you dumbass you don't have anything in a society that wasn't planned the way you see it happening. There are no accidents in life, people. And I'm not talking about, oh, well, this guy drove his car off a bridge. Okay, well, that's not the kind of accident I'm talking about. If your brain went there, <laughs> you're wrong. Beep, 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 beep. Ding, 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 ding. Hey, Cowboy Tech just showed up. Hey, Cowboy Tech, how are you on this Saturday afternoon? <laughs> We're doing a really bizarre uh, dork table extravaganza today from Denmark. And we're trying to discuss reality. But, wow, reality has so many different layers to it. So many ways to look at it. Except for... Now, this is the illusion part. The joint reality. There's only one way to see that. <laughs> Seven billion of us, but just one way to look at this one thing. You know, these ten laws or this one idea. Everything else is, hey, Hannibal the cannibal. Everything else is just, uh, I don't know, all in your mind. <laughs> well, I think that the the whole thing is actually all in your mind, and the rest of it is uh, mm, that's the part where you got faith and you trust what other people tell you. And they've told me some whoppers in my day, like uh, the inoculations are good for you. They will uh, protect you from disease when the whole idea if they explained it to you how it works in the first place don't protect you for nothing what i learned in dorkville america about inoculations was they're giving you the disease symptoms in the injection that's what it's for they give you the disease so that you'll get it bring it out and get it over with when you don't have it because someday you could get it. Hmm. Now, that's it's a great story. But how true is it? It worked on lots of people. And the diseases that they worked so hard inoculating out of us, some of them that I remember, uh, my parents would just, if somebody was sick in the neighborhood with it, would just go, hey, go get sick with those kids and just get this shit over with. And that's the way they did it. And it grew up and it turns into uh, inoculations.
but you're still it's the same thing you're getting the disease so that someday you won't get the disease so but being injected with something now there's there's the magic part about it okay that's why i don't trust the system if you're gonna give me the disease why are you doing it with an inoculation why don't you just get it from a natural source so that my body is going to fight it it's the design of the body is going to know what to do with con, you know, a con, contract like that you contracted a disease from an external source that's one thing but when you're injected with the damn thing how much does that change the playing field when you, i don't know i'm not a doctor i'm not a scientist but my mind tells me in my reality that that's not right i don't like the sound of that and if you ask any normal person and say, you know, I was thinking about going to sit down here and shoot me up a bag of heroin. And the first thing that they're going to tell you is, are you out of your fucking mind? You're going to sit there and put drugs into your system. <clears throat> and these same fucking people will try to talk you to, into getting a flu shot because other people have the flu. And if you get the shot, it's going to give you the flu, but you won't get the flu. What? I'm confused. Uh-oh. We're back on religion. Mental pancakes. USA is a death cult. Hey, I know. The people that participate in it don't know. Or at least the ones that do know, okay, they disguise that idea behind a political agenda when they're really just like wackadoodles that want to go to foreign places and hurt people they don't even know you know but hey i'm doing it for my country boy your country would be a lot nicer if people like you didn't go around protecting everybody else all the fucking time you know, why don't you just stay home and stay in your fucking house and protect your goddamn self and leave the rest of us alone <laughs> But no, that's not how it works. <laughs> the Jews got different ideas. <laughs> look at Palestine. Look at your look at wherever you are, whoever you are listening right now. If you're not happy with where you live, move. Get the fuck out. Stop wasting your time in this life being miserable. There's my there's my reality. If Sir came home tomorrow and said, I don't want to stay here anymore. I want to go somewhere else. I would go, okay, just like that. No, no whys, no please, honey, no, just okay. Because where I'm at is my last interest. I don't give a shit about any of that. Who I'm with, now, that pulls a little bit of weight in my reality. But in some people's reality, they're not loyal to nothing. They just... I don't know. They believe in their country. And that's not even real. So it's a good excuse to avoid um, having a real life, I think. Maybe. Oh, let's see. Dork Cakes is just jumping all over the place. Mm, and he's talking in his jibber-jabber talk that he does on the typewriter machine. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Um, Bush died. The middle, the middle Bush. Daddy Bush. Not Grandpappy Bush. He's been gone. Prescott Bush, and then the one he named after his boyfriend, um, George, what was his name, something, something. Well, the, his two middle names were the names of uh, his daddy's boyfriend or something. Forget what they were, but I recognize the initials. Anyway, eh, Bush, mush, who cares? Just as pathetic as Obama, just as funny as Trump, uh, no great loss. And he was the prick in uh, in the CIA through the Kennedy assassination. So he's, yeah, loyal to himself, period. Wow. I'd like to live like that. But unfortunately, I'm not a big politician, so I can't. Oh, man. I don't have anybody to oppress. <laughs> Yeah, but Cakes, you know, you're wherever you go, there you are. So, I guess the 
the answer to that question, however flash, where to go, question mark, the whole world is in big trouble. Um, that's why I don't care. Fuck it. If me and Cert go up in a nuke, I hope we're home together and I don't, you know, I don't miss, have it without her. But I'm not afraid of it. So that's the, you know, there's my my problem with it. Just hope it's Cirque's home for whatever we have to deal with. George Herbert Walker Bush. Thank you, Vincenzo. Oh, yeah. That Herbert Walker guy was Prescott's boyfriend. He loved him so much, he named his child after him. I mean, Jesus. That's a... Wow. That's some strange shit going on there, people. And this motherfucker went on to be a president. So... I mean, you know, we we worship all the wrong crap as a collective. Bush, are you fucking people? Can't you read a history book? I mean, is it that hard? <laughs> and I'd go, yeah, because all the history books are all full of bullshit about the people that did all the crap. <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm, always, I'm sorry, Grim. I won't oppress Hannah no more. No, Hannah's in the uh, other room with the women. They're they're uh, making cookies and sewing and I don't know. They're doing girly women things, and they're the type of women that aren't insulted when you say you're doing girly women things. They don't start yelling at you about, well, you can't talk to me like that and all that American shit. I remember. God, I told this joke um, on the dork table one time. Uh, my friend had a daughter. <clears throat> and her and then they followed up the daughter they had a son and the the three of them are changing the the boy and so will tells her throw me a diaper so she does <laughs> and it doesn't make it and he has to get up and get it and all this and he says, yeah you throw like a girl and she looks at him and she says well i am a girl he says no you're not and she says well i have long hair and he points at me. He says, so, Lou's got long hair. He's not a girl. And then she stops and thinks for a minute and stands up and points both her arms down with her fingers extended, you know, pointing her, ex her index fingers at her crotch. And she yells at the, not quite the top of her lungs, but to make the point, does the China mean anything to you? <laughs> this little seven-year-old girl. <laughs> Proving. Okay, proving to her, her stepfather that she is a girl by way of private parts. Okay. Now, I thought it was hysterical when I saw it happen. I still think it's hysterical to this day. But I knew I know the kid, I know the mom, and I know the dad, and that kind of talk at home was not wasn't rare, or un, unheard or anything like that. So the the daughter had learned to be a girl from her, you know, her elders, her mom and her uh, aunts and her great aunts and all that line of family that they had. So to, to read today about how children that age are being herded into 28 genders <laughs> makes me laugh. Is that bad? I don't know. I just, it's funny. 28 I don't. That was the number I read. I read it on the internet. I know it's probably a gag link or something, but I don't know. It's funny. <laughs> it's it's definitely dork table material. I mean, if you're going to talk about reality, don't leave out the 28 separate genders that we have to choose from today. Mm. And how how does one choose a gender anyway? I mean, what do each one of these genders have a special like handshake <laughs> how do you recognize your your own gender out there in see it's too it's stupid it is what it is you know they take a simple concept like men and women and then they start explaining it to you like you don't already have your own fucking screwed up ideas now you got to do is listen to the educated let them explain shit to you. And that's when you come up with shit like inoculations, fractional reserve banking, <laughs> uh, 420 megahertz, or is it hertz? 420 hertz. 
All these, see, all these little invisible, mis, misguided things that have been done over a long period of time. Now, that's a reality. People will all agree, oh, these things are real. What they argue about is the definition of the thing. So, hmm. So, whether... Hmm. Kind of lost on the idea here. But if I see something as a bad or a good thing... That's me judging it, not you. So we're back to reality. Where you look at it one way and I look at it another. And we're supposed to all agree and get along over our differences. And the differences, they're not physical differences. I mean, they seem to be. It's like the illusion of Trump beating Clinton for the White House, right? If you think that government has operated one iota differently than it would have under Hillary, well, then I don't see how. It's the same things happen. The explanations and the dramas to, you know, put on TV, that's all the same. Saw a link the other day, speaking of reality, where they were showing you different cities of news anchors all over the United States, from one side of the country to the other, all repeating the same freaking script, word for fucking word, calling it news. Now, I, I could understand it if it was the idea that was being repeated over and over and over and over, but it was actually, I had to close the door there, cooking in there, mixing. Anyway, uh, it's, hmm, it's the same thing, it, just di depending on the person looking on it, it might appear different, but it's not. It's an illusion. You know, you're going to make what you want out of it. Eh. It's a very boy, I'll tell you, it would have been nice if one of you guys would have come on to my dork table this week. But, I don't know. I'm going to give reality. Reality is so weird. And I'm stoned now. And my wife distracted me with her cooking. <laughs> yeah, when I'm not oppressing my dog... I'm oppressing the radio listeners out there in the real world. I guess, hey, there you go, the real world. Uh, mm, how real is the world? I, I know I get shit out there from wherever I order it from. And, mm, just lose, my, my mind is trying to latch onto one way to explain this and and it's like uh, last week I was having bananas in November <laughs> in Denmark, of all places. And I got fresh, ripe bananas and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just blown away at when the good side of the world and commerce works in my favor, I'm pleased as punch. you know. But when things don't go the way I want them to, and this is part of reality to me and then hey wait a minute <laughs> so you know as long as i'm getting my way i suppose this is this is what reality is uh, actually explained as whatever you want and you get that then your reality is good but if you want something and you're having trouble locating it or uh, it doesn't exist <laughs> we have a like people that are in love with uh, alien spaceships and such. Some of us believe that stuff's there and some of us don't. Just like the God thing, you know. And really, when you come right down to it, whether you believe something or not, is, that is, in reality to me, how you make it true. Because I've seen people look, listen to the exact truth about how a situation had, had took place and defend the lie over the, the truth because they didn't like the truth. Not because they saw it, not they heard the first story they heard was like this. The truth is way different than what they were told and they're not going to listen to you. And that's politics. <laughs> Climate change. <laughs> Climate change tax people. Are you Hello, is, is anybody alive out there in the world thinking at all? I mean, how do, are we so easily manipulated by a handful of fucking mental patients into this life that 
this joint life, you know, the, the overall thing where if, if I was in California, I would not be uh, as happy a person as I am today based on what I've seen of my ex-homeland. The politicians have completely gone insane, but that would be a representation of the population, wouldn't it, in any case? So if that's in the truth, then... America, hmm, wow, I don't want to, I don't want to be there, <laughs> I'll pass, it's too complicated, uh, it's not as simple as it used to be, I'm looking at too big of a picture, you know, it's like if I, if I had Grimm's life or Mary's life where you live rural, I don't think I'd have a problem with anybody, or Rob Works, or Mental Pancakes, or Moose Girl, Moose Girl lives in a small, you know, suburb, not in a big city. And uh, I, I sure loved it when I did it, you know. But I was younger then, you know. Now I'm older, and my, uh, what do you call it? My tastes have changed. I don't like to drink so much as I used to. I, I did a couple of months where I was drinking on my dork table, and haven't picked up a, a bottle to drink on the table for a long time. I can anytime I please. Just doesn't come to mind. But you know what does come to mind? <laughs> That's right. I said usually again, and I said again and again because what do you get a point zero 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 one of a penny from uh, <laughs> your sources? Everybody should be uh, obsessed by something, Vinny, but their own name. Eh, okay, it's novel. I still don't know any other Easleys. When I run into another Easley, then it's over. <laughs> Then you're just Vinny the Poot. And we're finished teasing you about your last name. But that's going to be a while. I have a feeling. Because uh, it's not so easy to do. And I didn't say easily. <laughs> anyway. Reality. Hmm. Let's think about how how would I describe um, a reality. Pick a reality to describe to another person. Um... The way that I see uh, energy, I think, is it's evolving. I'm not stuck on any one thing. I see, I see a link that the other, maybe a week or two back, that says they're they're bringing back Tesla technology. Okay, now the only problem I have with anybody using technology from Tesla is that if they're making money on it, who are they paying? Okay. And second is, where did the knowledge, what's your source of Tesla information in the first place? This should be open source. I think it is. I think anybody can go onto the Internet right now. Correct, Cowboy, you would know this, or Rob Works if you're around, or Vinny probably. But I could go onto the Internet and find information about Tesla technology and it's right there, open source on the internet, right? Uh, or am I depending on the regurgitation of the state about Tesla's technology? That would be my my concern. Would be what was what was the source of the information? You know, not what was the information. Uh, let's see. Ah, drunk Canadian rides a moose. People have strange hobbies in this world, but I'm soft on animals. You know, I don't believe in animal rights. I think animal rights was just a way to animalize human. You know, that was the the nail and legally, not not amongst us, like e how we agree or disagree, but how we're we're looked at legally through a word, and the system hijacks words and they hijacked human. And it's the def legal definition is monster. So in court, if you're trying to convince them you're human or living man or anything like that, you're just falling right into their clutches. Any kind of response to this freaking, uh, these, this group of pirates that have hijacked the legal system. And that's pretty much what it's, what it's come down to over the years. Is they started out with... You are only allowed to do this to now the law controls everything that we do. And I thought being in America was freeing us 
you know, of that having to do this because the state said so bullshit. And when I was growing up, that was what they told me. Be free, you know, enjoy your life. And then when I turned 16, it was, here, sign this so you can get your license. And I went, well, where's the freedom part? What? <laughs> Oh, oh no, honey, you're so screwed up. You don't know. You'll never be free. <laughs> That's just an illusion. If you want to be free, you have to go live on an island and eat berries and, you know, wipe your ass with coconut leaves. And that's freedom. But what we're doing, no, 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 no. This is, there is no way in my reality for me to look at the, the, society world you know the external the bigger world no way to see any freedom in it at all to me you know just i l happen to live where people have the decency to keep their you know keep a little distance between their opinion of you and you you know because i'm sure there's people out in the you know out here that i encounter that would prefer i wasn't here but don't take it to the reality level of it but um they're danish you know somebody and some people are like americans that fucker won't learn the language you know da, 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 da. but i'm not on their system you know i'm not using their government to do anything because i despise fucking government hmm. of course the topic never comes up verbally so all the public has to work with is their interpretation of what they see, just just like we do. And I remember when, uh, oh, I was talking about the, this place, he's a pizza parlor, and there was a guy who had a Japanese mom and a Mexican dad, or it was the other way around, one or the other, but his name is Chris Kanemitsu. I thought it was something else. And it, I was remembering it the other day the right way, because I always get stoned and forget the right name to the right thing try to clean it up two weeks later nobody knows what i'm talking about anyway <laughs> buy more shit yeah that's that's the way it truly works but the sad thing is we live on credit there is no money We're, it's all plastic and pretend and make believe and that huh See, when you start explaining it, then people will argue back. But see, that's what we've agreed to do. Okay, that is true. But in the uh, electronic world of uh, consumerism, if you go to the store and the store has an electrical failure or a in, their, their Internet's compromised or challenged or threatened and they got to shut it down, cash registers still take cash. <laughs> so see the concept of money is really what's the power not the money money is just a tool because they can they can still turn you down with cash if they want to oh well we can't open the cash registers blah 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 you can do and say whatever they want to the store is the store people think they have all these rights and all this crap when i grew up they used to have a sign in every fucking store I ever went to. And that sign read something like this. We reserve the right to refuse service to anybody. Period. Mm. And that's what the sign said. So I remember seeing that sign everywhere, but never anybody saying, I'm not selling you that. Except for those nasty cigarettes because I was underage by God and country so you know um, your money it talks depending on who's listening to it uh, uh, let me see what grimner has got to say hmm. flash somebody if you have to go live on an island or take a spaceship somewhere or a mountain hideaway how is that freedom? Isn't that just a prison of your own making? I believe that, but the rest of the world, I just always say, just make your prison comfortable because I depend on other people for certain things, no matter how I live. You know, uh, If I'm living someplace that has resource to grow their own food, there's still other things they can't manufacture because their interest is in growing the food. 
the meat's going to come from somewhere, blah, 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 dairy or electricity or whatever. I'm always, you know, I'm always in the game. Doesn't It doesn't matter because that game has got a dependent audience that begs it to be there, you know, and we're so easily manipulated. They misrepresent everything in the world to get us to use oil. You prove over and over that oil is destructive. It's bad for us. Use what you made, what you prohibited in the first place to use oil. And in a period of time, we could clean all this mess up. Unfortunately, um, if, I'm, if my knowledge of this is correct that I have now, they've messed with the nuclear facilities in, uh, with a negative expectation to accomplish what they did what they did was not an accident you don't have these accidents <laughs> if you operate your nuclear facility the way it was designed to be operated but legal definition and congress and certain senators pushed to make things appear to be something they're not so that again a handful of people could own a certain commodity and how we get fucked, <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. They te they did it to Tesla. They just limit the uh, amount of people that know the truth to a small group, lie about that for 40 years, and the public, throw them a bone every once in a while, make a nuclear reactor break down, melt it, whatever they call it. They're done on purpose. They're not accidents. They're uh, a result of doing the uh, the shutdown in an improper fashion. <laughs> you you can't turn it on or off under just any. That's not like a light switch. Uh, Galen Windsor was pretty definite about. There's a temperature that you use that you you turn the machine on, and every hour or every day it goes up this many degrees. You don't just turn it on and hit full. <laughs> but apparently, what we have is people that said, eh, fuck Galen Windsor. Let's melt this thing. Because instead of using the protocols, they didn't. And here we sit. And we got all these stories about uh, Fukushima. I've still yet to see a radioactive fish, but I've been way over here on this side of the world for a long time. And the only time that anybody ever talked about Fukushima or still does is American stuff, you know. And there again, if it's real, if it's not real, I'm way over here. How the hell do I know? They showed me a video. Yeah, well, okay. I saw Lord of the Rings, you know. <laughs> so, I don't know. It doesn't look very real to me. <laughs> but, well, my point is that I'm to the age now where even if I see the film, even if I see visual proof, I still got to wonder, some part of me is still, I'm not sold on what I see is, you know, that's not always good. Because I'm kind of nearsighted and uh, opinionated, you know, and I have my own way of, uh, of deciphering the things that I see to suit me. So, hmm, I don't know think reality is going to dictate to each of us what it dictates and in the end of it we're just going to type a bunch of shit on a computer screen or do a radio podcast and talk a bunch of crazy crap and have an opinion about something and for that few seconds or that time period it matters and then poof it's gone something else but joint reality is so uh, unless you're using it for some form of positive and it doesn't really serve any any purpose, just a, a nuisance. You know, like a, being a pothead, you know. Oh, you worthless pothead, blah, 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 blah. Oh, Java the poot and nothing but the poot. That's all right. Vinny, Vinny is, a, he's like a, a nice form of, his, of my worthy adversary, you know. Uh, Vinny's always nice when he comes in he treats the women real good he's all flirty and you know pays them special attention and all that shit you know and he's said he's pretty friendly with the fellas that hang around and you know and, and but some people think 
what they think, and I think what I think, and Vinny thinks what he thinks. So we're all basically right because we each got our own little reality going on. That's what I think. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. You know, we're so uh, we, we depend on being right. I did it for years. It took me years to understand, and I can't hold the idea very long. But <clears throat> being right doesn't really hold a lot of value. It doesn't mean anything. It only means something to the person that feels they're right <laughs> the other guy listening you don't give a shit if you're right or not it, in fact it seems to me that they would rather that you were wrong just so that you wouldn't be right but you're not and you guys know who, who you are all you anarchist scum out there and real liberty media.com you know those of you that hmm, turn a blind eye you know because you know you can't change this mess but you can make it worse. I call turning a blind eye. You know, so I don't throw more shit into the shit stew than already exists. And that works. It works for me. It seems to work for most of the guys. Vinny was out in the real world for a while, making friends, influencing people, and and then he went back to Arkansas, settled back down for a while, and now he's a slave to his new computer. Let's see. I don't abide rude behavior towards women from any man, says Vincent. That's because you're redneck scum, boy. It's, it's in your nature. You can't help yourself. Now, me, I don't particularly see. That's not how I see the gender split at all. I think that people get what they put out, you know. And what you receive is what you're looking for. Yeah. It changes from mood to mood, but. If you look for it, because there's an ignore button, you go backslash, ignore, space, J Dread. And then J Dread's gone, and I don't have to read anything. Any of his crazy stuff doesn't come up there. Then every once in a while, this is where I'm weak, he'll come in, and I got, hmm, I wonder what kind of crap he's telling people today. <laughs> so I'm looking, you know, I'm looking for the train wreck. Vinny knows it. <clears throat> but. You know, without participation, there's no train wreck. So there you go. But wow, man. Wishing people dead every day. Hmm. Ah, well, maybe that's it. Is is That's the lesson for the rest of us to learn is that we were either like myself. I was like that at, at some point in life. That's why I'm so disappointed with it now. You know, terrible. Um, I don't know. I wasn't a bully. I was too small to be a bully. But I wasn't um, like prey to predators. Predators did not take a, a fancy to me and follow me around. <laughs> and I was just a little tiny guy, but eh, I got left alone pretty much. And if, if anything, the real biggest big of the big would uh, befriend me, you know, to make sure that, nah, leave that little guy alone. Don't You're not proving anything by punching on him. You want to hit him, you hit me. Whoops. <laughs> and, now, that taught me that, you know, I'm I'm drawing this crap. This is the end result of the lesson is I was drawing that into my, my life. That's what I needed to, um, to survive or something because it was there. Just like water or food, uh, whatever outside stimulus that I was doing, it was, it had to be some kind of a, some kind of a desire. Because things don't just fall out of the sky into your lap. you got to go look for them. <clears throat> now, every once in a while, I'll admit, okay, sometimes something will fall out of the sky. But it's so so rare, like the $50 bill I found in the street that night when the cop threw me off the street, you know, off the hitchhiking. Don't be hitchhiking on my interstate, boy. And in my desperate moment, there's 50 bucks out of the fucking clear blue sky. And I didn't need it. It was excessive, and it was a lot of, you know, I had a few bucks in my pocket, but not not 50. <laughs> Let's just say that. But it was back in a time when uh, you could get a pack of smokes for 50, 60 cents. Um, you could go to a place and eat for a dollar. You know, what? it wasn't that hard to do. And you could get full and 
get a drink and all this other shit. It was just life was so simple and easy. And then I found all that money, so I went to right to a, a fancy restaurant and had me a plate meal and <laughs> waitress and all that fancy, fancy shit, you know. But without it, I would just be just satisfied um, crashing out under the pine tree and the pine needles and getting some sleep. And my reality has always been that way. You know, whatever I'm surrounded by is good enough for me. And sometimes it's been fancy and sometimes it's been plain. And that's not the judge of the happiness. Is the exterior of your, uh, the exterior of your rewards are for other people, not for you. Rewards a reward, you know, to me, not to other folk, but to me, a steak is just as good as a hamburger if I'm hungry. I'm just uh, that easily satisfied that if I'm hungry and there's a hamburger, okay. If I'm hungry and there's a steak, okay. Whatever, you know, whatever's available is good enough. I'm not, uh, I'm not a greedy, 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 greedy slob. Just a little greedy, just you know, enough to need the sustenance. But not enough to dictate to life. Oh, I got to have this and I got to have that. And my shoes must be brown and my socks must be black and, you know, whatever. I I hope whatever's on top is supposed to be clean and that's what I'm wearing. (laughs) So uh, some days I have better luck coordinating than others. But these little things in life that matter to others so much, you know, uh, their exterior, what kind of clothes they wear, uh, what brands of this and jewelry that and diamonds and gold and silver and all the trappings, you know. I even wear a wedding ring today, but my wife asked me and uh, I got st- uh, stainless steel. And I told her at the time, I said, every scratch in this ring over the years so will have a memory. And I don't have to know what they are because the rings carry in the damn memory for me because I'm old. And I don't have time for all that stuff anymore. <laughs> Let's see what's going on in the chat. Uh, hey, Vinny's talking about staying home and putting in a garden in the spring. Now, that sounds like a good idea. Hmm. And he's talking with Java. He's Buddy's mom kept running her mouth till Dad put a shotgun in her mouth. Whoop! I don't know where that came from. Oh, they're talking about physical abused people on the site. Yeah, sure. Um, I come from that world where my father was very disciplinarian man, and he didn't give a shit where he was standing when he disciplined his discipline stuff, and people would challenge him. Yeah, you can't do that to that kid. And guy would say, you want to take his place? And they'd, no. Well, then he'd finish his little, you know, whatever punishment, and that would be the end of that. <laughs> it was a little guy. He was like five foot ten, But he did have hands like bricks, and people just knew to just don't encourage the redheaded crazy guy because he, he might be, <laughs> he might be what he says. So he, as he did that through our life, you know, we inherited that cocky fucking stand up to them bullshit. And in my older days, the last, I'd say the last 25, 30 years, I've made a conscious aware attempt to drop all that, you know. And when I'm out in the public world and not be an imposing rock <laughs> you know, just flow with life and, and smile at people and get along and in the city it wasn't appropriate but in the little tiny place like this it, it works much better i'll give it that and in the city nah too many young girls to be all happy running around all the time <laughs> people just figure you're a dirty old man looking at the pretty girls but in the small town where there's not a lot of pretty girls because most people are older you know you're not going to run into a lot of children and shit like that just a little bit of it so the interactions are uh, i don't know they're more obvious i think because the less the smaller the crowd the more other people see of you <laughs> anyway mm. uh we've got something going on spreaker i like spreaker you know i like spreaker and bitshoot realliberty.org what else am i doing right now 
Not very much. Mines.com. I get a little pissed off over that mines. Uh, but there's a lot of voters on mines. Those poor people. And hmm. I figure it like this. If you can't get your mind beyond that Trump is the front man for a really bad banker band. And you really believe that the position that he sits in a chair pretending to hold is real. Oh, well, there you go. But I don't. I mean, not that it's not happening real, but not the de the, the defining explanations of what we're told. Complete bullshit. And all this Russia versus America crap. I mean, it's always something with these fucking governments. Because if you don't have an enemy, you can't justify your military, can you? So... But you're running out of enemies. I think all that's left is Russia and China. Everybody else backed off and said, Okay, America, you kicked our ass. You're the bully on the block. We'll do you whatever you want. And then, now you got this Vladimir Putin face. Okay, This is the face of a group of people. This isn't one guy taking a country to where it went. Can't do it by yourself. That's some fucking stupid illusion. The leader does. The leader's nothing. Without the people behind him, what's he leading? <laughs> what is he physically doing that's getting done? He's he's a mouthpiece, like a uh, like selling ever like like Trump. He's a washed up game show host. Uh, 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 uh. And now all he's fit to do is lie to the public about how great shit is. Just like they do in every other fucking country that you go to. But, <clears throat> excuse me, that was a dork moment if I ever had one. But, see, my reality dictates that all of our collective problems are all a product of state. Without state, we would have, uh, probably have free trade. And without all this regulation and these fucking governments inter, inter, uh, interfering with everything, get rid of that fucking admiralty court, too. That'd be the second thing to go. Um, well, no, but see, that's in a perfect world conversation, and we're never going to live like that in our lifetime. Man, they're going to just keep dragging this dead fucking cow down the road. I mean, it's been a hundred and something years already, and it hasn't slowed down any still going and then you got the derivatives market to think about <laughs> oh man oh Vinny is the connector of voices oh yeah and uh clive and bundy and the bundy trial and all that if you're interested in any of that stuff to uh <clears throat> for a good solid explanation go to see vince easily and he's got links up the wazoo about what really happened and what is happening now as a result of that government intrusion back at uh, the Bundy Ranch. But, you know, everything I've seen from government, oh, man, what a nightmare. Why would, why does anybody support it? it it's just got too much support. So I end up sitting here being all pissed off because uh, no matter what I think or do, my reality, I'm not going to, I'm not going to change anybody that's participating in it. Their mind is never going to change. They truly believe that their voice counts and they're doing their duty and all this other horse shit they've been taught to think. And there's, you can't, if you pop their bubble, what do they got? Whoa, then they'd have what we have, okay? <laughs> and what we have is our version of the illusion of society. Because there's no way that this is an agreed upon thing. This is shoved down our collective throats through stories and lies. Look at climate change. I mean, crying out loud, that fucking Al Gore won't even debate his own thing. It makes my tumor bleed, people. But that's a whole nother topic in it. Anyway, so let's see. Now, nothing much going on in the chat. They're talking about weather and such. Clive and Bundy. Hmm. What Grim will or will not do for all those poor people that... We do the radio stuff, but we don't know much about the the behind-the-scenes tech that goes into doing all the hard work. And it's still put button-pushing, but 
you know, having knowledge, that's what I mean. If I know how to do something and I know how to do it well and it comes easy to me, I don't look at it as work. I look at it as something I'm good at doing I like to do. End of story. So if somebody else says, hey, um, you're not good at doing this. I'll help you do it. I try it. And what I tried... Huh. You're welcome, Vinny. And I tried it with Grimner as far as on the computer. And when something needs attention, and Grim seems to be the best go-to guy there is, and I've already, I already know I can trust him. And it's not like people come to me and say, hey, there's something wrong with your equipment, blah, blah, blah. It's something to do with the radio. And, of course, Grim put it on here, and he knows how to work it. And all, so I have limited information. Because I don't look for it. So I trust Grim to do the shit for me. Hey, Cowboy Tech. It's, I don't know. I, I picked a... My wife went with reality today. And you guys know how my opinions of reality is so... It's not run of the mill. You know, my reality to me is whatever I want it to be. Yeah. You know? And... uh other folks, they they seem to be controlled by the reality, not in control of the reality. And I got the other opinion. I think that whatever I choose to believe and call it truth, whatever it is, it is. It doesn't matter because you're not in it. It's This is me living my mind, you know, my ex expression of life. So let's say that tomorrow morning I decided uh, I'm going to believe in God, the in a traditional fashion and I'm going to pick this group to join and be a part of their entity <clears throat> then I probably was abducted by aliens because I don't have any plans of doing that in the future but what you know what I've learned from my own personal experience is that plans are always optional you know you can plan anything, but it doesn't mean it's going to ever happen that way. Some things um, you can you can control, and other things are so far beyond your uh, my own conscious awareness of the word control. What I can do about something, depending on you know what that something should be, like the difference between how I look at my wife and how I look at the government that my wife. Um, supports then I look at my my personal life and my personal government and and then I have to justify her her decision and and either fight it or or agree with it and with the information that I got I decided to go along with uh, the wife seemed like <coughs> fight I only disagree with somebody when I disagree with them. Not just to argue. That's stupid. That's like Hansel crap. But to truly have a disagreement, you know, in words with another human being, what about, you know, what are you, what is so opposite that you need to um, have friction and not get along through it? And I think a lot of that, what I've grown to believe is my indoctrination into this belief thing that I got, because Mary knows all about that shit. And Mary's here, right? Hey, Mary, how you doing, sweetie? Anyway, um, yeah, uh, different people are at different learning you know, plateaus in their experience through this. Some people look at it and call it a, a rabbit hole. I look at it, I call it a path. I'm traveling from here to there mentally because physically I don't I've con I'm my my prison is small you know I can walk through it and from one side to the other in a day if I wanted to and back you know it's not a big journey or anything but there's plenty of variety to see and if I wanted to go beyond what's comfortable go exploring it's all there for me there's even a, a not a free town, but uh, more of a commercial, like a hippie place, where they got hippies that make shit from natural products and this kind of that kind of stuff. And I've 
personally felt it would be intrusive for me to to go and try to become a part of any of that. Ah, oh, thanks. You're done with the radio. No, I started 20 minutes late. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. I was. I I screwed up. I'll explain it to you later. Anyway, so. Ah, uh, let's see. So long as I stay inside. Is the weather that bad, Mary? Uh, you wanna you wanna come on the radio for a while? Oh, you're not on wire and all that, are you? No, no. Nah, we'll let it go. But yeah, Mary's a part of my reality, and I only know her through the internet. But she's she was my friend uh, before I met my wife, and uh, now whoops. Blanked out my screen hitting buttons. Um, but yeah, she's she's known Cirque almost as long as I have, I think. Like a week or two or something. It's some bizarre. It, it, the whole thing was so weird. I don't know. I, I met Cirque in an argument and went, I gotta get me one of those. <laughs> and then now five years later, here we are. Hmm. But then again, it plans and reality and all that shit i just do stuff and for i i've been accused of never growing up because i don't take responsibility uh to the level of seriousness the words imply you know uh keeping up a passport and all that kind of crap that that was necessary to financially survive you know because there were times i needed to go places to, to do whatever I needed to do to, to make money. So here we are all these years later. I like to say that. I don't know why, but I'm, I'm feeling so old. Anyway, but we're, we're uh, five years into, well, we'll be, we'll been together five years in March if we make it to March. So, and, uh, Wow, and I, I was thinking about this the other day, even uh, going to the grocery store and passing the same old shit every day, and and I still, I feel very comfortable. So, as long as my mind tells me what I want it to tell it, then things are good. You know, that's, um, ah, come on, Grib, I was just trying to take it off your back. Okay, yeah, he did something with a password, and. The next thing you know, I couldn't be on Spreaker, so he wanted to fix it. But that's the point. Is you know, Grim made the moop, the boo boo, and he he even came on my computer fix to fix whatever went wrong. And I can trust Grim. I don't have to wonder. Oh, did he do it right? Yeah, he broke it. He'll fix it. Simple as that. The fun stuff is when I break it, and then he he still manages to find a way to fix what I broke. But haven't done too bad with a. The computer, this computer software is real easy to use, and a lot of that is because he does the programming and all that typing, and then he he broke it down to me and showed me how to do it. I mean, followed. It's just a matter of following a few steps to open a window, and then you get this particular. And after a few times, I get used to it. It's just getting that over the jitters of that something new, and in, no matter how old I get, man, this computer is always going to be new. Mm. I grew up playing in dirt, son, digging holes and you know, burying shit. Now, weird, you know, sticks and toys, plastic toys and crap like that. You know, making making our own toys. Me and my brother were creative. We had bikes, and my father, as soon as we could walk, pretty much had us on bicycles. And in fact, <laughs> wow, that was a, a childhood. I don't have the memory of it, but the story goes that. My father had uh, put me on a bike with training wheels. Mm. So I'm somewhere around three, two to three years old at this point, right? So my brother, he's not old enough to try this yet. So I'm out in the yard, riding around on this bicycle, two-wheel bicycle with a set of training wheels on it. And my, the bike lose, gets a hold of me, and it's an uphill slope in the driveway, and I roll down the driveway into the traffic. But the oncoming truck saw me coming before, so he slowed down and didn't hit me. <laughs> or I would have been accidentally creamed by a truck at three years old. Now, this is the story I'm told. I don't I don't remember it. Mm. So, I don't know. 
maybe the the things in life this is what i mean about i don't know if there's a god or not but if it hadn't have been for not being hit by that truck that day i wouldn't be here today <laughs> so and then and every event in your life you trace back you, you can find one earlier that was even stranger mm. oh you're getting to be the on the wire that's a very good miss mary yeah, Cirque finally broke down and got on here the other night. And for some reason, it gave me trouble too, but everything gives me trouble, so nobody listened. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't get the damn thing to accept my email because I was typing something, doing something wrong. And what that's what I I learned with computer, if you keep get if you get the same thing twice and it's an error, wait a minute, it's you. The computer's doing what you're telling it to and you're telling it wrong. So here I am, pussy whipped by computers, and figure, well, if the computer tells me I'm wrong, it must be me, because the computer knows everything. <laughs> so, you know, pussy whipped, computer whipped, it's all the same in the end, isn't it? Bow to your master, because in reality, you choose your master. <laughs> I suppose I like my coffee, you know, um, there's things that life, you know, makes available to me, but I couldn't do them all by myself the way that I, that I receive them. So I need other people to help. It's just like the radio. You never know. There's 35, 40 people that catch the dork table and out of that 35 or 40 people, maybe there's a couple people that were, hmm. That's not such a stupid idea after all. Buford, listen to this. <laughs> you know, because telling other people the same thing they're already thinking, which happens quite a bit, is uh, it's rare. Because, hey, man, you're not supposed to. This society doesn't want you to think that stuff. Grimner, get off that anarchist boat, you idiot. You're going to get hurt. Those anarchist scum, they'll they'll destroy your life. You know, wow. And you'll get that kind of shit from somebody that saw a movie about anarchism. Well, there you go. And there's my reality is so whacked because over the you know 59 years I've been told things that are just not true about everything. You name a subject, and I'll show you how I was told it was, and then what it ended up to be in the end. And I can't find a, a a topic that doesn't start out looking really good. And then by the time you get to the end and to the explanation, it's just crap. Anyway, I don't know. I did a, uh, I did a take two here on the dork table this week. And I'm going to call it a day from Denmark when say this to you folks before I say goodbye. It's as real as you want it to be. That's... All I can really tell you that I, I am sure, and I'm talking for me when I say that, it is as real as I want it to be. Whatever it is. So chase what you want. You'll find it. And if you don't want it, then uh, that's another story in itself. Maybe I'll try to figure out a way to do the dork table next week about how we deal with the opposite of what we want and how it affects us all <laughs> as a collective because everybody knows there's something wrong they just identify it differently different realities anyway thanks a lot for hanging with the dark table here on uh, the first first of december ah how cool anyway and uh what do we got coming up with we're on saturday so tomorrow morning we got mr blues the grimner man it's going to be playing some blues to the trivia table we will go I don't know. I don't think I played good last week. I tried a little bit and got frustrated, went off and did my puzzle. So I'm going to try again tomorrow. I always give it a shot, you know, because sometimes you get on a roll and you might really get some answers. But Oh, hey, Grim, thank you. Uh, you never know. And then after that, we got Hal Anthony coming out from behind the woodshed with another body. <laughs> now, nah, poor Hal. It just, he's, I hear his frustration. Because I'm one of those 90% that are just, no, 
I do not recognize state as a reality, so there's my argument right there. But see, there's people that do, and if the if you're one of the people that live and die by the freaking state, Hal knows how to play their game. That's what I like. Oh, thank you back, Miss Miss Mary. Nice to see you at the end of a dark table. And then speaking of that, after that we got Tuesday night. We got me again. Oh well. <laughs> don't know sometimes they're fun sometimes they're i don't know i do what i can last week i held a couple of hostages and tried to fight about stuff but nobody would fight back just got quiet and i went oh okay but we disagreed about something on in a perfect world so it's a start maybe I get moose and um vinnie to come back and we can have some more fighting time um hey java doctor thanks back and uh we got miss mary coming on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday and Friday on her Rocket Chair podcast to entertain us with all the shit the world pulls on us when we're not looking. <laughs> Some of the links that woman reads. I think I was wondering if you didn't write some of that yourself there, little messy, but no, apparently Miss Mary's been reading real links off real internet sites that about shit that really happens for many years now and, and I have to wake up and face reality and go oh man <laughs> I'm just having fun Mary because you popped up and uh, after that you got the Freakers Ball with Miss Moose and Grimner at the helm entertaining you with witticisms and music and I'll tell you if you can catch the videos it's the best I had just 5 o'clock in the morning is so early grim but every once in a while, I, I do that. I go to bed at 9 and get up early and check out the old uh, Real Liberty Media Freakers Ball. Solely because you can't videotape the, the live uh, music. But when he plays it live, you got live video. And some of the stuff is, you know, you see it once in a while. You never think of opening it on your own. So it's kind of a kick. Anyway, and with that, we're going to say see you next uh next week on the dark table and if you catch in a perfect world i'm going to try for Vinny and moose girl next week so over and <laughs>